In a resplendent cloud, the Holy Spirit appeared. The Father's voice was heard. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today's Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Elizabeth Wise. Our feast today is the transfiguration of the Lord. We know that after our Lord revealed that he was going to suffer and die, he wanted then to comfort those who heard that and show them the glory that would await him in his resurrection. We are called also to follow in the footsteps of Christ. We also struggle, we also suffer. But our Lord says to us, there will be glory in the end. And so my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant, we pray, to your servants, that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and one of a great age took his seat. His robe was white as snow, the hair of his head was pure as wool. His throne was a blaze of flames, its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire poured out, issuing from his presence. A thousand thousand waited on him, ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. A court was held and the books were opened. I gazed into the visions of the night. And I saw, coming on the clouds of heaven, one like the Son of Man. He came to the one of great age and was led into his presence. On him was conferred sovereignty, glory, and kingship. And men of all peoples, nations, and languages became his servants. His sovereignty is an eternal sovereignty which shall never pass away nor will his empire ever be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is King most high above all the earth. The Lord is King most high above all the earth. The Lord is King. Let earth rejoice. Let all the coastlands be glad. Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne, justice and right. The Lord is King, most high above all the earth. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. 
All peoples see his glory. The Lord is King most high above all the earth. For you indeed are the Lord most high above all the earth, exalted far above all spirits. The Lord is King most high above all the earth. Alleluia, Alleluia. This is my Son, the Beloved. He enjoys my favour. Listen to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone by themselves. There in their presence he was transfigured. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than any earthly bleacher could make them. Elijah appeared to them with Moses and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter spoke to Jesus, Rabbi, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. So let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. And a cloud came covering them in shadow. And there came a voice from the cloud. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Then suddenly, when they looked round, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They observed the warning faithfully, though among themselves they discussed what rising from the dead could mean. The Gospel of the Lord. So yesterday we heard in our Gospel that encounter uh, with Peter and Jesus and the, the other disciples. When Jesus says, who do people say that I am? And some of them have a guess that he's a reincarnation of Elijah or one of the prophets. But Peter then says, you are the Christ, the Son of God. But then just after that, um, Jesus says, look, I'm going to suffer and I'm going to die and then I'm going to rise from the dead. And Peter takes Jesus aside and said, this shouldn't happen to you. There was, of course, an understanding that when the Messiah came, that he wouldn't suffer and die. And yet Jesus tells them over and over again that that's what's going to happen. But you could imagine it would have been quite distressing to them. And so he takes Peter, James, and John up the mountain and he reveals his glory. Now, why Peter, James, and John? Now, Peter, we know, really didn't want Jesus to suffer and die. Literally, he told Jesus, this shouldn't happen to you. So you can understand why he said it to Peter, because Peter's struggling with this. And what Jesus is saying is, look, I am, but this is the glory that awaits me. But why James and John? Well, well James and John were known as the sons of thunder. They uh, were, were uh, in it, we think, for the glory. Because they, they, they say to, um, to, to, to Jesus, um, you know, are we going to rule with you in the kingdom? And Jesus says, well, yes, but can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? I.e., you know, will you suffer and die like I'm going to? And indeed, uh, certainly James did. So they also were told that they were going to suffer, they were going to struggle and die. And so Jesus wanted to show them, look, I know this is going to happen to you, but this awaits you too. Now, in the account we hear today, Moses and Elijah are with Jesus. Now, it's interesting that those two figures are, are there because Moses experiences God on a mountain. He goes up Mount Sinai, and there he receives uh, the Ten Commandments. There he communes with God. Elijah, similarly, on Mount Carmel, a different mountain, but he's there, and there um, he does battle with the prophets of Baal and shows them that there is one true God. And so he encounters God in a powerful way. Here, Moses and Elijah, once again, on a mountain, are encountering God. 
because Jesus is the incarnate Word, the incarnate Son of God. And so they experience once again God, as does Peter, James, and John. Now, what does this say to us? Well, Jesus wants us also to be transformed. We're told when um, he goes up, he, he sort of uh, shines like a, like a very bright light, whiter than any bleach, as we're told in the gospel. He's saying, look, this is what's going to happen to me. I want this to happen to you. I want you to be transformed. A little bit like a, a, a chrysalis becomes a butterfly. It's a little bit like this. It, we, we sometimes, when um, we uh, 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 are going somewhere, uh, we either get there by coach or by car, or um, sometimes we stay in a hotel. That's not the holiday. The holiday is when you get off. In some senses, we are kind of in the departure lounge, if you will. We're in the hotel, we're in the, um, the, the plane or the coach or the car, whatever it might be. This is just the journey. When we get off, that's when we will experience the glory that, that Jesus experienced and that Peter, James, and John witnessed. And so today, let's pray that we may be transformed. I think there's so much to the transfiguration, but I think that sometimes uh, we, we struggle in this life I think Jesus is, is, is saying to us, yes, you're, you might be carrying a cross today, but very soon you will be transfigured. So let's pray that on this journey, our Lord will walk with us and that we will, as God the Father asked us to, on that mountain, listen to him. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor cleanse us from the stains of sin. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples, and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this your victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Elizabeth and Joseph Wise, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, 
for granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. Sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of the body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your love. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. When Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is.
Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the dead battle. Be our safe,